buying a sports team, that's why you want to get the Jaguars. Or like, it doesn't matter how shitty that sports team is, it looks, <laughs> it, it helps you out financially. <laughs> Throwing shade at you, Jaguars. You got Let me so buy this shitty team. No, so whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sweet Derek, are we live? We are live. Coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, this is The Naturals Pod. Welcome to this episode of The Naturals Pod. As always, I'm Uncle Kyle, seated on the sticks, mission commander for this episode, Sweet Derek, the producer. What up, Natties? Let's go. Today, we have a very special guest, former special agent with the U.S. Department of State and comedian, Matt Andrew, welcome to the show. Up, hey, oh, happy to be here. So, being a former special agent, I have so many things that I want to ask you, but right off the top, I need to know this. Where is the special anti-aging serum that the CIA has, and mm, can you get yeah. me some? Because <laughs> right. you do not look your age yes, at all. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's... Uh, that's uh, um, that's in the sub level of uh, sub level twelve of the agency, so yeah. <laughs> we're not allowed to. That's a d double top secret. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> it seems like there would be a lot of biometrics and key cards in yeah. between us. No, all to get all there. us former special agents uh, look uh, thirty years younger than our age. No, that's uh, that's just genetics. My I might got that from my mom. I think. Yeah. If you look at most former special agents, they look way older than than they actually are. Yeah, yeah, that they, they that actually ages you. I'm I'm an anomaly among anomalies. I think. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, because yeah. it's because because like, comedians too. Comedians also <laughs> both comedy and uh, and being a special agent ages you way worse. I yeah, just I just makes sense. I just got lucky. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like look at pictures of presidents when they went into office and when they got out of office. Like the job working in diplomacy is stressful. Well, uh, yeah, but the, <laughs> that's not a fair comparison. I was definitely not the president. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, stressful job, perhaps not president level stressful. <laughs> Absolutely but. not. No, nowhere near that. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, no. I am. I'm, I'm. I realize I'm lucky to look younger than I am. Yeah, I'm. I'm 50 and I retired last year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Congratulations on that. So we both got our little cup of coffees. Do you drink coffee every day? Every day. Every single day. So I have got something that you might want to try in the future. It's this little energy shot called Magic Mind. Oh, look at that. Little magical mind booster. It's got plenty of nootropics, mushrooms, little matcha. It's got a nice sweet flavor to it. I have one of these with my first coffee of the day, and I'm just all peppy. For 24 <laughs> you hours. You seem peppy now. Uh, uh -oh. I, I, I are, you, are you about to get more peppy? peppy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, we'll all, we'll we'll all witness peppy. the effects of this during the interview. <laughs> I want to stay locked in for the pod. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but yeah, guys, if you, for the next 10 days, if you would like to give Magic Mind a try, using our code NATURALSPOD20, you get 48% off, up to 48% off on a subscription and 20% off Yep, a one -time off your purchase. Purchase, yep, so you just go to magicmind.com slash naturalspod and then uh, use that code. Yeah, naturalspod20. I really appreciate uh, your guys' support and Magic Mind for doing this. It is a great product, and uh, it'll keep you locked in for the day. Coffee and Magic Mind, bang. See, I've, been, I've been slumming it with the old tropics, and I need to get with the new tropics. I, there I, you yeah, go. yeah, 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 yeah. You need to get on <laughs> there board. There you go. New tropics are the way. <laughs> but I would imagine in your line of work, you were just drinking buckets of coffee because you, you mentioned I checked out your website before you came on you mentioned you have traveled the world quite a bit yeah i uh i um i have <laughs> I, uh, I well i started young i was i was born in germany um so my dad was in the air force and uh and so i i just kind of grew up uh uh, traveling around a uh, traveling man so uh, yeah i was born in germany and then uh, we we moved every two or three years oh wow uh, were you yeah. always stationed out of the country or no would you end no up back uh, in the States? yeah no after uh when i was three we moved back to like shreveport and then i mean i could uh, i could fill the podcast with <laughs> the geography <laughs> uh. <laughs> but uh um and then i went to high school in germany and uh and then and then i joined the foreign service and um and with them um jerusalem um uh, Bahrain, Afghanistan, Macedonia, uh, um, Namibia. So yeah, we yeah we keep it moving. So the foreign service service would be something separate from our United States military. Correct? Yes, yeah. So there's the Department of Defense, and then there's the the Foreign Service. They're they're different. Um, there's uh, there's kind of like 
you would think of like the civilian, uh, the civil service, the foreign service, and then the, the military are three different um, ways to serve. Okay. So is that similar to being in the military where you enlisted, you did a boot camp and you had a rank and, and all of that, or is that structured a little bit differently? It's definitely structured different, differently. It is similar in that you, uh, you know, you're, you're employed by the U S government. There is training. Um, it's different in a lot of ways. There's a, I wouldn't call it boot camp, Um, but, uh, and I, I was also in the military briefly. Um, so, uh, so I do, I'm familiar with the differences, um, but uh, um, yeah, there there are um, you know pay grades and ranks and um, uh, and and things like that as well. So, what was the main mission with what you were doing with the foreign services, and what was your role in that? Yeah, I mean the the role of the foreign service. <laughs> I don't want to speak on their behalf anymore, but uh, <laughs> you know they forward America's interest overseas okay. and, and with our and with uh, foreign nations and. Um, uh, our, my role, I was a special agent, so I worked for the, the diplomatic security service. Um, and uh, what they do is they kind of protect democracy, and they do that in a few different ways. Uh, they investigate uh, fraud. of They investigate visa and passport fraud, uh, so they do criminal investigations. Oh, okay. Um, they also um, protect dignitaries. They protect diplomats. Yep of both flavors so they protect foreign dignitaries and diplomats in america and then they protect american diplomats overseas and um and they uh work in embassies uh american embassies overseas and they're kind of the ambassador security consultant um overseas and manage security programs like they they're the operational commanders of the uh, marines and the local guards to to protect those embassies so you mentioned guarding foreign dignitaries and it is something that has been i could name off a dozen movies gerard um, butler white house down and stuff like that. yeah, that's exactly like that yeah that's a documentary actually yeah. um but were you were you ever doing mm -hmm, yeah uh, like secret service style protection uh wow. with the earpiece and stuff yeah so cool. we do uh, dignitary uh so uh <laughs> um I, a friend of mine one time called it like the secret secret service so uh the secret service protects heads of state uh, they've got um uh statutory um authority to protect heads of state and then everybody else falls to the diplomatic security service i i, I hope i have that exactly <laughs> i might not have that exactly right but it, it's it's kind of like so we uh um so uh counterparts to the secretary of state uh foreign ministers we protect them um and then uh uh others like um the dalai lama um um prince and princesses things like people like that uh we protect them um so was uh, there any crazy like situations or, that you might be able to talk about that might have happened where you're like oh this is kind of a hairy situation we got to get this person out of here because i would imagine in a situation like that like you are pretty much ready to go at any moment because you have to be like if somebody's trying to take a shot at this person you're protecting you need to be able to move and react immediately yeah i mean that's uh that's uh you should be yeah <laughs> should be the job. That's yeah. The plan. They, yeah yeah ought to be um <laughs> uh the um i'm trying to think of uh specific instances uh i think I'm, I'm having a hard time coming up with a specific instance in America of protecting a, a foreign dignitary where we had a, oh, well, I can think of a funny story. One time um, uh, it was at a university, we had the Dalai Lama, and um, there were there were two events. Uh, one was in the morning and one was in the afternoon. And um, in the morning, everything went to plan. We had screened, uh, it was at an arena. We had screened thousands of people. and. Um, and then in the afternoon, uh, <laughs> uh, we started to admit everybody, and they just uh, walked right through the, the screen. Zero metal detection. They just walked through everybody. I was like, and, mm. I, and I was in charge of that uh, that uh, facility. <laughs> and um, and uh, so I went to the, the head of the, um, the university uh, security and was like, hey, you know, what's <laughs> what's going on and they said oh no these are all students uh we know them all and i'm like you know every single person that come in goes, yeah they're, <laughs> they're trustworthy yeah, right. they're all yeah. good this and is fine i was like this is not i i said i'm sorry this is not i don't remember agreeing to this uh, <laughs> but and um and i went and called the, the agent in charge of the detail and um uh this was um I think this was about 2005. Uh, I, he, uh, the the head of the details said, yeah, yeah did, did they happen to remember what happened in Virginia Tech a couple weeks ago? There had been a school shooting in Virginia Tech a couple weeks ago. Yep. And uh, and uh, and I went to the person. I said, yeah, he asked, do you happen to remember what happened in Virginia Tech a couple weeks ago? 
what we agreed to was we pulled everybody out of that arena and had them go through a screening. Oh, uh, they had to pull every single person out. And so Matt Andrew had to go, sections A through E, you're going to exit your seating and come back around. Oh, and re they were not happy with me. Yeah. I was like the face of that that <laughs> that movement to pull every single person out and have them go back through them. I, was like, I had to deal with a lot of uh, unhappy students. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's one of Gotta those situations it. where caution needs to be in abundance. There should be no steps. Skip. Well, every single situation should be that. Or why are you doing it? You know, I mean, why are you doing it? It's it, Otherwise, it's just security theater. And so, I mean, I, that was kind of my... Uh, the response of just like, yeah, I know all these. I know all of them. It's just like... Bullshit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's just crazy. Like, what? <laughs> it was just... Yeah, and a lot of times people do that. It's just window dressing. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, but... Uh, well, anytime you go to a professional sports game, I'm not trying to out myself, but I have done independent experiments. And what do you expect from somebody that's getting paid 15 bucks an hour and they put a metal detector wand in their hand? Like, are they doing the most thorough job possible? Probably not. No, a lot of uh, security is, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how, how deep I want to go into it, but uh, I mean, the... Uh, uh, our airports i mean after 9 11 the uh, the the one one group of people you do not want to fuck with is americans on an airplane i mean uh after during 9 11 uh they they would not allow that last attack to happen because they americans will they woke up so i mean really i i think that we spend just so many what probably trillions of dollars on uh, preventing attack that cannot American, the, the people on that airplane would not allow to happen. Um, it's just, uh, I, I, I think a lot of it is just kind of that is the main theater. reason I don't really like flying anymore because I am that guy. I cannot sleep on planes anymore. All and one little whoop, and I'm just, oh, we're falling out of the sky. <laughs> but I'm the guy who looks around at everybody and I'm like, who is it? Because if you make a move, I'm coming because some people will say, oh, I'd be too terrified. I can never do that. They're essentially going to kill you. Like you need I have to another, do something. Another funny story. I uh, it was um, it was not long after nine eleven. We we got authority to start wearing our our weapons on airplanes, and um, uh, I was actually with a different uh, agency at the time. And uh, they, you know, but any it was just irrelevant. But I um I was uh, like just chilling out, listening to Air Supply on my headphones, and, and uh, there was another. Um, uh, not an air marshal, but an actual U.S. marshal on the on the flight, and uh, we, you know, who else is on the flight? And uh, I see him sprint back <laughs> fast, and uh, a guy had gotten he was hung over, f had fallen asleep, his alarm was going off. The uh, flight attendant had woken him up and said, "You need to take care of this." Um, he got into an altercation with the flight attendant. Uh, a different flight attendant had taken <laughs> taken his sorry taken his uh, like taken him by the jaw and said, "You need to look at me." Um, he bit her thumb. Oh, and uh, I mean, she kind of uh, assaulted him first. I mean, she yeah. Why are you grabbing his that's face? Technically anyways. assault. Yeah. yeah that's uh, um, <laughs> um, uh, fast forward. He ended up doing thirteen months in jail. For, <laughs> oh, damn. But um, uh, so anyway, the 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 marshal and I grabbed him. Uh, flex cuffs came out of everywhere. Like uh, the and um, and we. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, <laughs> did you hog tie him? Get we, the feet we, and the hands. We did. Uh, we didn't hog tie him, which would be connecting the two. But we we did we did uh, got it, well, after we got his wrist. One of the flight attendants said, "I want his ankles tied too." And apparently, <laughs> we now worked for her because we did it. So, <laughs> and um, but uh, uh, one of the um, I mean, it was a. A chaotic mess and one of the one of the passengers was like shoot him shoot him oh um, what shoot him oh. at one point <laughs> at one point we were protecting him from them um Whoa. which is which is where i kind of came up with that one group of passenger one group of people you do not want to mess with is, is yeah. american passengers on the airplane like yeah they, nothing was gonna happen like no you could not take over an airplane i don't think in the, um yeah i mean it, it, it's not. been proven again, again. <laughs> don't try to find out <laughs> not in america motherfuckers <laughs> so That's how i feel when you were traveling like that in an official capacity and you said you were allowed to carry a firearm, would you just go to the side of TSA, show them a badge and be like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to get too far. Into okay, that. okay, okay, okay. That is something <laughs> we funny. cannot put on the pod. Um, so do you read a whole lot, Matt? I wouldn't say a whole lot. 
<laughs> what do you like to read? I guess is a better way I could ask that question. Oh yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I guess it, it changes right now. I'm reading a whole lot of like uh, self help stuff. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, I don't, I don't read, uh, I don't read as much as I would like to now. I, you know, I don't do anything as much as I would like to right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm in. A, I work I, all the time, um, but I never feel like I, I do anything as much as I would I'd like to. But I'm reading some of them. Why do you ask? So. I'm a huge spy novel fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, which I would imagine, given the line of work you were in, you're like, I don't want to read about that. Yeah, I'm not that way, yeah. But um, there's this one author, Brad Thor, and he was a member of a Red Cell team with the CIA. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, no, not, not really. Yeah. Is this a made-up thing? Should I call out Brad Thor? <laughs> Are you lying to us, Brad? <laughs> but... He's written probably two dozen books on this same character. His name is Scott Harvath, and he was a SEAL who became a Secret Service agent and then became an agent of this private paramilitary group in the United States called the Carlton Group. But he is just like the epitome of a badass super spy. You know, like the t the the like perfect gray man. I love reading them. It's like it's like reading an action not, uh, movie. I think um, I think sometimes uh, like I liked the movie Zero Dark Thirty, and um, what I noticed about what they did in that movie is they took uh, the entire um, uh, like establishment, the counterterrorism establishment, and they boiled that down into one character. And I I think that a lot of times that's what's happening is that you'll you'll see. Uh, um, you'll, 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 they'll take what would have happened to maybe 15,000 different um, pe careers and they put that into one character for you to make it very entertaining. What a lot of people hated on Zero Dark Thirty for that very reason because they're like, you made it seem as though this one woman went on a mission, hunted down where Osama was, and it's like, I'm surprised they didn't also put her on the helicopter in the scene where they were going to execute the I mission. I think that's the kind of what, may, that, that might be what's happening with this this character that you enjoy. Yeah, I mean, it's very romanticized and punched up, and of course, he always takes what is going on politically currently and weaves that into the story. I used to like, uh, uh, um, Tom Clancy and Jack Ryan yeah, yeah, when I was yep. in college, uh, but um, I, I, I mean the things that happened. I think he was president at one point. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, it's uh, if it was if it was realistic, it wouldn't be. If he was doing timesheets, I did a lot of timesheets. <laughs> you don't hear about the boring things. That's why it's funny because it's like Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise and Rowdy's just sitting in an office somewhere doing timesheets. I mean, there was a lot of typing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so jumping yeah. out of airplanes and all that. I mean, there were, there were moments of excitement. And um, and that's really what I loved about my career is I would uh, um, think about, like, I'd be um, in Namibia drinking my morning coffee, watching the sunrise. Uh, I was at a construction site wearing a, uh, a high-vis uh, vest and a hard hat, um, uh, watching the sunrise, remembering uh, that, you know, uh, my last, uh, you know, two assignments ago, I was in Namibia drinking my morning coffee in a suit uh, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And, and you know, two uh, assignments before that, I was in Jerusalem uh, at the, you know, um, in, in the at the Palestinian uh, presidential palace or whatever. You know, you, you, you remember that you have these moments and this kind of these realizations of these these badass things that you've done. And, and that's... and. But between those, there's just months of timesheets and, 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 and sitting in follow cars with, with fellow agents and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned being in a hard hat and high-vis vest. Was that an undercover situation, or was that after you had gotten out of the I, service? In, in Namibia, I was in charge of the security of the construction of the new embassy that we built there. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Which was uh, – that was my – my second to final assignment. Um, so uh, before I was in charge of the of the office in uh, Las Vegas, I was in charge of that construction, the security of the that construction project. Where is Namibia in Africa? It's uh, on the west coast, just north of South Africa. Okay, so towards the bottom. Then. Mm -hmm, yep, <laughs> towards the bottom. Well, because they say I think I was like looking at because I was thinking about traveling uh, to South Africa at one point, and when you get into like the upper parts of Africa, it's like do not even go there. Like you, do you, were, they won't even it's take people could, there, right? But, so um, we usually call it north and south, not upper and yeah, bottom. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> you got top Africa, bottom yeah, yeah. Africa, <laughs> north part of Africa. Yeah, it just uh, seems like super dangerous. Like. Uh, well. Um, 
Yeah, it depends on the, the part, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Namibia, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say my, my time in Namibia was lovely. Nice. Uh, yeah, and uh, I would um, recommend it. Uh, yeah, I heard the, South Africa is awesome. That, that too, yeah. I think uh, um, the, the safaris and stuff were yep. fantastic. I, I taught my dog how to ride on my motorcycle, drove that across Namibia. We used to go camping all the time. Um, the so topography is similar to... Uh, Nevada, it's a uh, kind of high desert, um, but then you'll see like a giraffe. Um, we we just got to uh, backtrack a little bit. How do you, how do you teach your dog how to? Yes, I like, yeah, yeah. know the steps. Like, so. I gotta know. Well, like, they, I had a little, I had a little carrier, so okay. I had like a, a BMW adventure bike, and then uh, I had a little carrier that I put on. He's small. Oh, okay. And then uh, so I uh, just um, sat him on it with it running, um, and put, fed him treats, and then uh, went on short rides, <laughs> and long, little longer and longer rides, and then. Um, and then that's really cool. Went, yeah. Your little motorcycle companion. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I would be terrified the entire time. One time I was in the car with one of my little dogs and I don't know why he did this. I had my window down. He had his lease and harness on, but he just decided I'm jumping out the window. <laughs> so I'm holding the dog and the leash out the window and trying to turn off of the main road so I can get out and get him back in the car. But yeah, while he hung, hung from the, yeah. yes. Yeah. That would be terrifying. Yes. <laughs> my life and his flashed before my eyes. Uh, Raider just hunkered down there in the bottom. He didn't like the wind. So yeah, just hung out. <laughs> yeah. And so, then we had a little tent. We went camping. It was, it was awesome. That is cool. So that was a dog you got while you were in namibia no we got him in macedonia uh he he was living in a little bush in the in the parking lot of the embassy a few Macedonia had a lot of strays it was kind of funny they would uh they would take them and um spay them and put a little earring on them and then put them back out on the street so you'd see these these dogs and with their little earrings they on got their ears pierced. yeah yeah right. and you knew that they were they had had their shots too uh anyway there there were a few in the uh in the uh parking lot and as a security officer this was funny too people would like i got complaints about once a week about the dogs either that the guards were being too nice or too mean to them and uh and i would always take the complaints and be like yeah i'll, I'll take care of it and i never said a word to the guards they their job was hard enough i just i just yeah. i just let them do their thing but uh yeah radar lived in a bush and my my wife would like walk, walk past him and uh she started giving him uh uh like her lunch and then um one, then one day, well, this is kind of funny too. I, we were op operating under the assumption that I was allergic to dogs for, for years. Uh, she went up to the attic and got my medical records and came down and she was like, you're not allergic to dogs, you're allergic to cats. And the next day, Radar was in our house. Oh, cats are the worst. <laughs> Why did you think you were allergic to dogs? Because uh, my parents had a dog which I, to whom I was allergic. So that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a little bit of that too. It's like a mild pet, now cats. Like him, he is deathly allergic yeah, yeah, to cats. Same, yeah, like badly. Yeah. I'm not deathly allergic, but they make me feel itchy and uncomfortable. And then every once <laughs> just in a their while, behavior, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're too uh, dismissive and aloof. Yeah, yeah, I like an like animal that loves me a little more. <laughs> so on top of that, I mean, like, what led to like, I mean, comedy because that is just a wild switch in yeah, careers. You yeah, know what I mean, I mean, uh, as well, I had a friend um, uh, who had just in passing mentioned that uh he had done an open mic like years and years ago like 20 years ago he, he had mentioned that he had done an open mic i was like oh that's a way that's a thing that you can do and um and uh gosh i i just had this kind of pipe dream of trying an open mic and so when we were in um dc um in like 2018 i started thinking about that would be something that would be fun to try and uh and then 2019 i finally uh muster up the courage to to start going to open mics to watch other people and and when you do that you that's um that establishes a lot of confidence because you see how bad they <laughs> how bad you can be and still do it you know yeah yep, uh, yep, yep. like if they could do it i sure is that well, it's personally it's like it's like i could do that yeah you know? and um and then uh and then in 2019 I, I did my first one and was hooked you know and so that that's when i kind of started thinking seriously about uh, start to look at the financial, you know, what what will my retirement look like? How much will my pension be? What will my savings be like? Uh, can I make a go of this um, full time? Will, will that allow me to do this um, full time? And, and and found that it would. Cool. So, yeah. And you've been grinding. You recently took a trip to Texas and I think you rented an RV, right? And drove uh, down there. Well, no, I have it. I have an RV. I, I, oh, I, you have yeah. an RV. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. my, my, well, my parents um, uh, 
um, I inherited my parents' uh, old RV, and so it, it took that out to the Wild West, my Peacock Wild West Comedy Fest, uh, um, the first annual one, and um, uh, to which I hope to go to the second annual one next year. And right. uh, yeah, that was a fantastic experience. Uh, that was uh, uh, really cool. I, ha- I uh, thank you. I, I feel like I have been grinding. Yeah, I've been trying to, to yeah, you've been putting yeah. a lot of time in, and yeah. we see that, dude. Because we, like I said, we keep we we pay attention to the local comedy scene out here and see the guys that are really putting in the work and and effort in. But so, did you check out like the Austin scene too? Because that's like a just a huge comedy scene right now it's blowing up out there so. i did i did when i uh when I, I drove past it uh the the festival grounds to austin and and um spent one night there and nice. uh and hit a couple mics out there too cool yeah it was uh um it was cool to see yeah it's really growing out there for sure but i mean honestly i think it's growing in vegas too and its own thing and they're going to be bringing the studio here and all that crazy stuff so i think the growth uh, here could could I've noticed that every everybody in every scene says that there's the best, and uh, and I um, I feel that way about Vegas too. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud of it. Cool. Take that everywhere else. <laughs> we are the best. So, what made you like choose Vegas out of curiosity? Then, like all, all the places that you could could live was there a circumstance? Uh, okay. Yeah, my um, when when we were in Namibia, my dad uh, got sick. He he had cancer, and they were in Arizona, and so I went to. Uh, I, I said, what's the closest I can get to Arizona right now? Uh, there was a vacancy in, in Vegas for the, the supervisor of the office here. Okay. And so uh, um, I kind of knew the people that owned that position said, can I can I have it? So I curtailed my position in Namibia and, and moved here. We went all in, sold our house in D.C. They sold their house in Arizona, and, and we went all in. And it was just serendipity that the it, it dovetailed with my comedy aspirations. Yeah, nice. So, like, who are some of your, like, favorite comics then? They're, like, inspirations or people that you're, like, ooh, like, I really admire their... Yeah, I mean, I kind of go old school. I like David Letterman a lot. Okay, uh, yeah. You know, uh, um, Bob Newhart. Um, but, uh, in terms, like, <laughs> slightly more reason, like, I love... Uh, everybody loves Norm MacDonald. Uh, oh, yeah, the, the Norm, late, Norm was late, great, yeah. Uh, R.I.P. Yeah. Norm was great, yeah, man. of course, yeah. yeah. But um, I like Louis C.K. a lot, too. Yeah. And, um, but, uh, um, frankly, I, I, I don't watch a lot of comedy um, because I'm just... Uh, I see so I, like I'm spending a lot of time yeah I mean and they say sometimes too it's better to not watch comedians when you're trying to do comedy because then you're copying their style and you're not creating your own style you can unwittingly pick up a lot of it up yep. um, but uh, I just uh, sp- spent hours and hours watching or waiting for my turn and so I'm seeing it anyway so to go home and then watch stand up would be um, <laughs> just not something yeah. abusive to yourself <laughs> yeah it's just not, I just don't yeah I just don't have to do it but yeah that I was I was gonna say exactly what you said Derek um you don't want to put any undue out outside influence on yeah, yourself knowing or unknowingly yeah you were there last night when i got to do it for the sure first did. Time, yeah, yeah, yeah and i felt like i did pretty well um you did very well congratulations i, I prepared <laughs> i prepared you, and there you had will clearly be more. you had clearly prepared yep and uh, and that was apparent that you uh, you had put a lot of thought and, and effort into it and preparation is yeah. key yeah. yeah absolutely yep so you mentioned in your pre-pod interview that you performed comedy at the CIA and the U.S. Department of State. The U.S. Department of State and a weed bar in Detroit. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. I um, yeah. I, you know, I try and perform. I like performing those weird gigs uh, anywhere that will have me. I, you know, I'm not gonna say no. Um, uh, when I was in um, D.C., I had a few different liaison positions. One of those was at. Uh, CIA world headquarters and they had a, a talent show uh, at which I performed and um, it was actually pretty funny because they uh, they they filmed it and I had the best tape I um, maybe I'll ever have uh, the and um, and I asked them you know could I have a copy and they they gave me one and oh, cool. it was classified secret no form so like <laughs> I, I don't have I was, it was on their own system so I, it, it remains uh, yeah <laughs> I mean how tough was Matt that Matt Andrew the I, lost I, tape yeah yeah it was a good little set um, I would feel like that would be a tough crowd, though. So, like, I mean, if oh, you could crush dude. that room, I feel like you could crush any room. I mean, I did well, but around. yeah, it was uh, it was one p.m. on a Tuesday in a government cafeteria oh. with a huge, <laughs> uh, with a high ceiling and um, the the silverware is clattering and everybody's so cold sober, of course. And yeah, people were coming in. Yeah, it was a, it was not great, <laughs> but uh, but I mean, cons- given that, I did fine. Yeah, it was good, nice. and I was also relatively new too. But and then yeah, the uh, State Department. I also uh, crushed. I have that tape, um, and uh, it was uh, there. I had a lot more. Uh, at both of them, I had a lot of inside baseball kind of um, uh, stuff to do. Oh yeah, you got to play to your crowd. Yeah, the weed bar was less. Good. I no one. I got nothing from those guys. <laughs> that the, uh, uh, they did ask me to repeat one joke, which is kind of funny because uh, I did a church. Uh, uh, 
a church talent show at my church that went great and i was like man this these are good so then i saw i, I like uh, i found a different church talent show that uh, wasn't my church and so I, I drove out to it and um there it was like uh it was like in this basement and it was just they had been doing it for a while and it was a bunch of people like parents watching their kids play violin and then they put me up first and it was like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> no, no 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 they did not cuss this was in a church yeah, right. no but that's what they thought yeah. <laughs> yeah. it took me it took me a while to warm up just to get them to warm up so i mean I, like do you know who pete holmes is yeah yeah, so, yeah like sure. pete holmes yeah. is like that and he talks about that in the show crashing it was a great show kind of yep so, yeah, yeah it was like, a very good show I've seen that, yeah, yeah it was great and he just there's like people that comedians that tour like churches it seems like that's, no that's a that's good a thing, gig so. if you can get it yeah yeah, yeah that's a good crowd that's interesting yeah. so you probably had a specially curated set for that because i've watched your clips on youtube and some of the stuff not so church friendly no i i, can, I feel like i can work clean or dirty yeah uh, late night as i call it yeah um i like to try and uh fit my material to the crowd um yeah and i actually i felt like i was i, I was you know we're all kind of flailing around trying to find out what 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 we can what will stick you know and um everybody's trying to I think do that in their own career but uh i was pretty much clean until i got to vegas <laughs> and <laughs> vegas kind of like eh, no you're not gonna be i mean you're working, a little mud in your water you're, you're working in these bars and you gotta have to kind of uh, um you know grab their attention yeah kind of be edgy uh, yeah at 2 a.m at champagnes you know my stuff about horses might not catch <laughs> and so um in a larger sense i'm trying to have fun uh i i i kind of get paid in fun um, I really don't get paid in money that much. <laughs> and so uh, um, I'm really just in this to have fun. And so I'm going to do what makes me have fun. And so uh, if if being uh, if doing a late night, you know, dirty set is what's fun for me, that's what I'm going to do. And um, or if being clean uh, for a church group is more fun than this also what i'm gonna do and so i i like to do both and I, I, what one of my internal goals is to have like a 45 minute clean set and a 45 minute late night set because i just think it would be um kind of badass to do nice i love that i mean i respect that a lot because if you're getting i'm i mean this is for anything including like our stuff if you're getting in it for solely like money you're doing it wrong yep like you're not doing it yep. for the right reasons anyways you should be doing it because you enjoy doing it it's fun you're having a good time doing it and then if money in a career come off that then that's amazing but well i mean some yeah. some people might not love coal mining and they, you know, they might have to do it for money i don't i don't begrudge anybody that but no. I'm, I'm fortunate to be in this position yeah. where i don't i don't have to make money at comedy and, exactly. and I'm, I'm clearly doing it just because yeah. it's a blast it's a passion i love that so are you a big sports guy matt you got any teams? <laughs> are you a knights fan now that you're living in vegas the um, hockey no, my mom is kind of a knights fan i don't really follow i don't really have a lot of time for sports i did i played rugby for a long time um I, my son plays rugby i enjoy that i i wouldn't call myself a professional sports fan <laughs> necessarily though no. how how did you get into rugby and what i know nothing of rugby or i know a very limited amount about rugby how did you get into that and what was your position yeah, I um well I, I wrestled in high school and then when I went to college my uh my school did not have a wrestling it didn't have any wrestling but they did have a rugby team and um they came to recruit it during a, like a freshman thing and it just seemed interesting so I, I fell in love with it immediately cuz uh um just kind of being outside and, and playing with uh, uh friends was you know, or teammates was a uh, um was a, a kind of a breath of fresh air literally figuratively, figuratively after a wrestling <laughs> and, and uh, a slight beating too yeah rugby, rugby seems is a tense. rough sport yeah yeah i like that the impact yeah it's uh <laughs> it's something that i respond to um is both both yeah i like the impact and and um smearing guys into the, into the yeah she got to be friends afterwards you know don't make it personal not too the hard third half yeah uh, the the parties are fun too but um uh <laughs> i uh um and so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed. That was a, a big part of my college experience was was playing rugby, and then I continued to play in men's clubs. As I moved around, it was really nice because it was like an instant forty friends of uh, with a real a little bit like comedy. It's a, a real disparate group of uh, professions and um, guys you wouldn't you wouldn't normally hang out with unless you had that unique shared interest. And um, so, I, I really kind of enjoyed that. Um, that part of it what was your second part of the question kind of how i got into it or what what position what, oh, what position how many I positions are there all there are right? 15 oh, um they're uh, all individual well i mean they're like two flankers and two locks but uh I, I played hooker primarily he's the guy that hooks the ball back when they put it into the scrum yeah i know <laughs> that's too, that, and that's when everybody <laughs> just goes 
<sighs> like That's a true. Roman battle oh, yeah. into That's one right. another. Yeah, so there's the the guys from either side of the team that that uh, that push the ball back with their foot. Uh, they hook the ball back with their foot. They're called the hooker. They're right in the middle of that that scrum. Dang. Um, I played flanker a lot too, which is the guy on the side of the scrum that runs out to to go uh, smear the guy to fly half with it. Anyway, I could go on and on. But. Okay, so played rugby, football, NFL guy. Yeah, no, How do we feel no, about that? I don't. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a big big fan of the NFL. Uh, the the uh, I, I do like football. I enjoy the sport of football. I do not appreciate the way that this. Uh, this um, group of 32 billionaires uh, conflates themselves with the sport of football um, because uh, that and that's how I feel about the, the National Football League. So you're not a Roger Goodell f- fan? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a big fan of Roger Goodell. <laughs> yeah. I, I did. I followed. Uh, I was a passionate fan of the Patriots for for a long time. Okay. And, oh, um, so you got the Golden Brady years. And it was uh, and it was only once they started to not be so good that I felt kind of released because the content is compelling. I get that. You know, it's it's uh, and and then finally I was like, oh, I, I can quit watching <laughs> football. But the scandal after scandal, and then the just the the way that we uh, as taxpayers continue to give these billionaires um, our our hard earned dollars uh, just. Uh, literally makes me nauseated so i i just kind of um uh got to the point where th- these these guys are not gonna get another dime of my money i'm not i'm done with it well and they did that here they introduced that tax here when we were building raiders i worked on that project for almost two years because i'm a union electrician um but i was saying the same thing now don't get me wrong the project itself was cool to work on and they would have quarterly craft appreciation lunches and mark or mark davis mark davis yeah the owner of the raiders mm-hmm. is that what you're talking about yeah uh, i always get it wrong um he would come out and he'd mark have davis you got it right yeah uh, he'd have his little high vis vest and his clean hard hat on and he'd shake hands and take pictures of everybody and they gave away tvs and video games a trip to the super bowl tools like all kinds of stuff it was from a worker's perspective, hey, I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. Fine. I'm just it gonna was, be honest real quick though, dude. If you're a billionaire, can can we get a better haircut? The hair is terrible. I mean, what? I mean, what is this? I mean, this has got to be the worst. I mean, that's, dude, you're you're a billionaire, man. I, that's like, low hanging fruit. Everybody gets something. <laughs> I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> no. But look, we're not attacking. No, let's, the let's, hairs. let's go after him about the billions and billions of dollars that uh, the 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 yeah, taxpayers that we had to him. pay. I know. And then and that's Stupid. beside the. The stadiums is one thing. The stadiums, everybody knows about that. But the depreciation that they get, too. They depreciate the value of their teams. That's an untold uh, uh, cost that everybody gets, even the ones that, that build their own stadiums. But first of all, build your own stadium. You've got these billions and billions of dollars, and then we're going to go ahead and build you the state. And they hold these, these cities hostage. Fucking leave. They're going to have to go somewhere. I wish these cities would stand up for themselves for once. Act like a man. I mean, the, the, the problem is it brings the city a lot of money. Too. No, it does not. To the higher, it, people, it truly though, does not. Did. You it, don't think it brings like people no. to and the it's gonna, game, and, and they're going to have to go somewhere. No, it's going to have to go somewhere. They, they they need a city. That I mean, that's how we got the athletics. It's a zero sum, and, and essentially the Raiders. Where were too. the athletics going to go? Where the fuck were the athletics going to go if not here? They were. John Fisher yeah. was going to go somewhere. We did not get have to give him five hundred uh, uh, million dollars. That was r- ridiculous. He had nowhere else to go. He was coming here no matter what to give that billionaire. That guy's got six billion dollars to give him five hundred million dollars of tax. Have you seen the roads around here to give him five hundred million dollars? Yeah. He did. Th- I'm, I vote on this issue, and I hope that they they hear it. That was ridiculous to give him that kind of money. Yeah, outrageous. I can't feel how angry you are about it for sure. <laughs> No, I, but I, understand I, it I mean, I totally yeah, agree with it's, it. It's unfair. I, I, agree. I, I mean, I like baseball. I'd like to go see an A's game, but the, to give him that that kind of $500 million to that billionaire, yeah, stupid. Why, I, I understand why he'd ask. I mean, honestly, it's a little gross that he'd ask, but for us to give him that, I'll vote on this issue, and I hope other people will too, because the, the, the politicians that caved on that, vote him out. It's, it's stupid. That was a stupid move. There's no reason to do it. Give that money to the schools. Yeah. yeah, I mean, our schools are really awful. bad in the state, too. Awful. Yeah, which is awful. no money. Going I have kids in them. Yeah, yeah. It is really under the guise of being good for the city. I'm going to play both sides of the fence He was coming here. no matter what. He had nowhere else to go. Correct. Um, That's just so, so such poor negotiating. I think Las Vegas is in a unique situation where they get to take more advantage of the professional sports because I've been to many of the Knights games 
there's a ton of people coming from out of town to watch their team because it's like you get to come to Vegas and you get to watch your sports team play. And I'm sure it will be the same thing for everybody else. Uh, God, I wonder who paid for T-Mobile. Now you got my gears turning and I'm like, right. He paid for that himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I respect good. that. Yeah, very much. That's why I'm more of a Knights fan than any other team. But to but to bring it around, essentially... But he still gets the depreciation, which is another separate issue that more people should know about. I, I, w- I want yeah, you to talk yeah, about okay. that. But um, you built this giant arena... And you're like, you're going to get the money back. This is going to bring money to town. They play eight games in it a year. And they uh, I mean, they occasionally have these big concerts and such there. But for the most part, that thing is just sitting there with the lights on and nobody's home. I mean, it's the same Look bullshit as the F1. The F1 shit. This is going to bring so oh, much money. Oh, restaurants were F1. empty. And like people that work down there had to go to the nightmare of like four hour long. You know what I mean? No, we as citizens just continue yeah. to take it. Yeah. And and then you're like, you, you're like, hey, I give you all these you know, millions of dollars. I'd like to come see it. Buy a ticket. Yeah, I know. You, you know, you want to come? No, no, it's kind of mine because I, I paid for it. Yeah, yeah, buy a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bro, but what is this devaluing thing that you speak depreciation. of? Cause, cause depreciation. So they depreciate the value of the team over time, and then they get that this tax break. So to have a professional sports team is immensely valuable to these uh, owners because they depreciate the value, and then they get this huge tax break of the team. So on paper, it looks like the value has gone down of the team, even though it's it's actually very valuable to them. I'd like to know how they do that. It's a because... tax loophole that the Congress gave them years ago. Hmm. How many years ago? I I, I, I don't know this, but, but I, it's been around a while. Yeah, and I I, I, I don't like that. No, it's I don't gross. like that because they're it's making gross. billions yeah. collectively it's, as it's the owners. It's more complicated. Yeah, so on paper it looks like they lose money. In actuality, they make money and they pay less taxes. So it's uh, the, buying a sports team. That's why you want to get the Jaguars or like it, it doesn't matter how shitty that sports team is. It looks <laughs> it, it helps you out financially. <laughs> <laughs> throwing shade at you jaguars you got let me so- buy this shitty team no so whatever save yeah. Uh, taxes. yeah yeah <laughs> no yeah it, sense, it, it, yeah. it makes you a lot of money because you you save a lot of money on taxes because you depreciate the value of the team that's and, and they'll all, they'll all often say like oh no we're actually losing a lot of money just ask my accountant no they're not it looks like you're losing money in order to make you uh, uh in order to save you a lot of taxes that's that wild. is it's gross that, that is, is the one thing that i re- that is one of the big concerns i have with all the hollywood stuff mark Wahlberg coming out here they want to build a studio the rules are different for us than it are for billionaires and i, I don't know about that but for sports team owners it, it definitely is the case 100 percent. and the thing is they'll <laughs> say all you need to do is learn how to find the loopholes and it's like well i will say now listen uh the for Corporations, that's one thing, because they're accountable to the tax to, to their uh, corp, their shareholders. Mm-hmm. Yep. These thirty-two men that make up the NFL are not a corporation. This is a club. You know, we're three three white men with beards. If you add twenty-nine other three white white dudes or three twenty-nine twenty-nine other dudes, they're no smarter than anybody else. They just happen to have a lot of money. For them to have this amount of like, they're making twenty billion dollars a year. And then they like Congress is getting involved in Deflate Gate and stuff like it's a national issue. <laughs> that was it's, wild. it's bullshit. That was wild. For that, these guys to wield this kind of power and then hold these cities hostage. No, I'll I'll be requiring a, a couple billion dollars or I'll leave. It's bullshit. Yeah. And and people start need to start standing up for themselves about it. They're not getting another dime of my money. Spin facts. That yeah, that shit makes no sense to me either. Like when they had all of those Senate hearings. When Barry Bonds, Mark McGuire, yeah, the Sandy steroids Sosa, scandal, all the stuff, steroids the and all of that. Today, yeah. today, a black woman is four times as likely to die in childbirth as a white woman. A black woman that has a child is four times as likely to die as a white woman is. Do you, are, are there congressional hearings about? But Deflategate, they're fucking all over that. It's bullshit. We are you focused know, on you the look wrong at, issues. You look at Detroit. And Baltimore, look at the inner cities of Detroit and Baltimore. But it's, uh, but if the, but if the Lions or the Ravens leave, that's the that's what we should be concerned yeah, about. Yeah, even like Chicago thing or right, East yeah. or or East Las Vegas. And the, but we're gonna spend a billion, a couple billion dollars on a stadium. It's yeah, fucking bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You can look this up. They're doing this program in Baltimore right now, I believe, where they're selling homes. These are all vacant homes. They're small, all kind of slapped together. But they're doing a program where they're giving people 50k to renovate it 
but these places are in shambles. I'm like, 50K won't even make a dent, like demoing it and cleaning it out and just getting it ready to build something new. So they make all these little false promises and they set up these programs like look at how great we're doing we're helping the community and so yeah like, so it looks like they're really? doing they're doing properties purchased for use as a primary residence will sell for one dollar but they have to prove that they're going to do at least no less than ninety thousand dollars to complete the renovation so it seems like they're literally oh you could buy this house for a dollar but you got to spend more than ninety thousand dollars to renovate the home and make it hmm. look much nicer so, so you're that still is, ending so up trying to like gentrify maybe the area then it's kind of cheap but I don't, know, I don't know yeah it's if they were going to gentrify it, they would sell it so somebody could put a strip mall on it, you know? Yeah, I guess that's true, too, but... Well, yeah. yeah, that's... <laughs> it is sad, that's though. A lot of the great cities are just crumbling, and the the focus is in the and, wrong and, and area. Having a team does not help a city. Yeah, and yeah sports. Th th that's been proven again and again. Having a, a, a having a stadium does not help a city economically. And, um, and that the, all the arguments for that have been proven false again and again. Um, it, it just does not help them out. Because uh, because uh, people come in to see that team and then they leave. They do not really spend the money that they, that they that the team claims they do. All these studies that the claim that the team will will uh, finance uh, have been proven wrong again and again, and um, just over time, that it, it just never works out for the city. Same thing's true about F one. I'm looking at you, F one. Yeah, I hated that. That was the dumbest decision ever. I, I think generally everybody hate that shit too. All the locals were like, just please stop like we don't want this anymore already and we're locked in for potentially 10 years like fuck no <laughs> so we'll see we'll see if it gets better but that's uh that's my feelings in a nutshell about the yeah, your football that, that, that collection of <laughs> you know, 32 men who uh that because the, a lot of times i think there's a this this idea that you know that's that's football and it's not football football it, you know division three college football on a crisp fall day i love that or you know Friday Night Lights, high school football. I love football. I love football, but football is not those thirty-two men. And and time after time, you're like, well, why would that? Why would a, a player get fined for that? Or why is this decision being made in that way? Well, they that 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 organization uh, exists to put money into the pockets of those thirty-two people and and any decision that make gets made is to, to put more money into the pockets of those 32 people and once you start to look at it that way then things start to make sense and everything that they get, all the decisions get made for that purpose yeah i mean even just to give one example that was really stupid is did you guys read about that tyreek hill thing where he took like it was a backflip and his buddy took a picture and he got fired and and fined because he, his friend took a picture of him doing a backflip like because it wasn't nfl certified or that whatever. guy like, that's such bullshit was like, some he was some kind of social media curator yeah. of some kind but he we, you would have Ty to look he it up worked for tyree kill correct though. yeah when it's just like you're what but he doesn't work for the those 32 men so correct. And they're like we're not making money off this so mm -hmm. let's get rid yeah. of that guy and uh, find tyree kill so yeah. i like that was an example to just back up your what you were saying it's, and, it's shitty and you brought up college football what's your take on nil deals because what was his name the guy who was the head coach of alabama he recently retired and he was in a press conference and he said Saban. yep yeah. he said uh my wife and i have this tradition where the new players or the people that we're trying to recruit we have them and their families over to our home we make them a meal my wife talks to the wives i talk to the husbands and the sons and we basically tell them what our goals are for developing developing their son into a man not only helping them further their football career, but also educating them and, and teaching them to be upstanding people, which I love that. Now he has retired and he came out and said, this last time we did the dinner, my wife looked at me and said, why are we doing this? These parents don't care about how we're gonna develop their sons. They only care about what we can offer them as far as them making money with these NIL deals. I mean, I, I'm not familiar with that, so I don't, don't want to. I'm speaking out of ignorance, but um, they're also uh, adults. I mean, true. Um, it's a name, image, and likeness. So now they can have, they can do sponsorships. I'm, um, I'm kind of. I'm, I'm for adults. I'm for it too because again they make all the money you know what I'm saying the colleges make yeah. a bunch of money and go you're well you get a free education it's yeah. like while well, they're making no free yeah, yeah. <laughs> these 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 I mean again these not-for-profit colleges who make uh, millions and millions who sit on these endowments I mean 
so many of these colleges never have to charge tuition. They never have to because they have endowments that the interest alone on the endowments they could they could give away tuition for free. They could they could give they could be given all the students a free education if they wanted to on the interest alone on this endowment that they sit on, and um, that they're going to charge. I, I think these these adult men who are bashing their heads against one another for the profit of the school could be getting paid. I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, same. So I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it, and I agree because not all of them are necessarily going to become professionals. My thing is, where do we draw the line? Because they have, for basketball and football, they are recruiting these kids in high school when they are sophomores and juniors. They're not even getting ready to go to college. They have all these big camps. It's all over YouTube. And I'm like... Are we going to start paying the high schoolers too? Like, I, I I don't know. I think it's a slippery slope. I like that they're getting money. You know, in uh, in Europe, uh, you can't you join a, a, a soccer development team in uh, in in Europe? At like like if you join like Real Madrid's development team at the age of fourteen um, and start becoming a professional soccer player, I, I think that's that's a way to to do it. Um, and I think that's why they're so good at soccer. Um, Probably. And, and it's a I had no idea that was even a So thing. it's like that with tennis, believe it or not. So they know, because I was in the tennis world, they know if you're going to be a pro when you're like 10. It's a legitimate trade. And you'll be like 15, 16 oh. when you turn pro. Yeah. Like, so Nadal, when he won the French Open as a professional, he was 16 years old. Wow. Um, and, so, and he got and, paid. I mean, maybe that's not a bad thing. I mean, yeah. what, what's, what's, if what's, you know they're going to be that good. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. That is fair. I'll just be salty. I wasn't a, a young no, you're not. superstar. <laughs> now I'm a approaching middle age. What about the love of the game? What about just doing, I mean, you could still play soccer with your friends, uh, but some pros are going to be. I mean, you could still play football with your friends, yeah. but some some people are going to be pros. And I, I, like that's kind of why we, although America is good at soccer, ours we have this college system that's not as good as. The, what the Europeans are doing, and and that's why we're not doing great in the World Cup, because we, we insist on sending our kids to college and not making them be amateurs. Yep. Well, okay. Well, Matt, this has been a very interesting conversation. <laughs> oh, Thank we're you done already. Coming on to <laughs> the quick. Oh, yeah, well, quick. Yeah, it well, I'd love to come back. Uh, yeah. So, Matt. Thanks again for coming on. We had a really interesting talk. Yeah. Give us some dates. Let us know what you got coming up in the future. Um, so uh, Sunday, Queen's Ball at the Queen Bar. I'm an honorary queen. I was just an honorary queen uh, this last Sunday, and I'm nice. uh, loving that. Yeah, those guys are great. And that's going to be May the 5th? Yes. And then uh, May 22nd, uh, Rick's Rolling Smoke, which is always a fun room nice. uh, yep. on Wednesdays. And so I'll, uh, I get to appear on the show, that showcase. Yeah, guys, if you're in Vegas... Check both these out. Queen's Bar with our friend Ray Earl. You saw him in the last episode. It is so much fun. And then Rick's Rolling Smoke is a great room as well. They have a nice little bar, inexpensive drinks, some comedy. No better way to spend a Wednesday evening. Their barbecue is. You can't, and also, can't leave that out. And <laughs> also the barbecue. Yes, you can't mention Rick's Rolling Smoke without the barbecue. But anyways, guys, thanks for checking in with us again. I'm Uncle Kyle. That's sweet Derek. Thanks, Matt, for coming Matt on. Andrew. Remember, Yo, thanks so much. Magic Mind. So magicmind.com slash naturals pod, naturals pod 20. We appreciate you guys so much. Go support Matt. Like, comment, subscribe. Love you all. Best producer in the world. Plugging it at the end. <laughs> See you later, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Naturals Pod. Please remember to follow us on your Twitter and Instagram accounts at the Naturals Pod. Do you have what it takes to join the Natty Nation? Like and subscribe to find out.